Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. Hi guys, welcome on the brand new episode of the Clear to Send show. Uh, today we're continuing the series on 802.11ax and we're going to talk more specifically about 124, 1024 Quam and the new MCS uh, rates that we'll have available in uh, AX. So uh, the, the episode is broken into two sections. First, we'll talk about 1024 Quam, the new modulation technique that we have access to now with uh, uh, AX. And then we'll talk about um, the new rates, the new MCS uh, that we have available now with AX and, and why it gets uh, a, a little bit more com- complicated on that side as well. Uh, so first to talk about 1024 Quam. So uh, up until now, up until AC, uh, we've been using different modulation techniques and um, actually in AC we introduced 256 Quam um, and uh, the, the IEEE went one step further with AX and they introduced 1024 Quam. Uh, so uh, if you guys aren't familiar with uh, modulation techniques, um, it's pretty much the way we encode signal to represent bits. And uh, the more, I guess, the more complex the modulation technique is, the more bits you can carry throughout the signal. Uh, so with 1024 Quam, now we're able to encode 10 bits per cycle on each subcarrier. Um, so it's, 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 it's a step forward. It's a, it's a more complex modulation technique. And we are able to do this by increasing the, uh, the different levels of amplitude we use uh, with Quam. Uh, so QAM um, stands for um, uh, quadrature amplitude modulations, and we use we modify the the phase of the signal and the amplitudes to get different um, different options. Um, and by adding one more level of amplitude, we'll be using to encode the data. That brings us more um, more options, uh, and then we can send more bits per uh, per cycle. So 1024 QAM. Uh, it's nice. It allows us to send more, uh, send more bits per cycle. But on the other end, if we want to achieve that complex modulation technique, uh, we need a good signal quality, right? So for us, uh, it means that we'll need our clients to have good SNRs if they want to achieve the 1024 QAM uh, techniques. Uh, so if you want to, if you're not too too familiar. Um, uh, about you know modulation techniques we use in in Wi-Fi. There's actually a great video on YouTube that you can watch, uh, where Keith Parsons explains the different modulation techniques and how they work, going all the way back to you know the the BPSK, which is the simplest modulation technique we use in Wi-Fi. And uh, so you can you can go on, on YouTube. We put the link in the uh, disc- in the uh, show notes. If you go to clearsend.net slash one sixty seven, you'll be able to. Uh, to find the link and then and watch the video, uh, it's about ten minutes and it ex- explains the uh, the different modulation techniques used in Wi-Fi um, and how the, how they work and how you're able to encode the bits on on the cycle. It's it's uh, it's very nice. Um, if you attended the CAC class from Ekao, uh, Ekao, you you should uh, already know about that because we do this, the same uh, explanation during the class. So here with Quam, uh, uh, with 1024 Quam, now we'll be introducing two new MCS indexes um, uh, with Wi-Fi 6. So with Wi-Fi, uh, with AC, we go all the way up to MCS index 9. And with Wi-Fi 6, we'll be going to, uh, we'll be adding two MCS index, so index 10 and index 11. So both MCS indexes will be using the 1024 uh, modulation. The only difference between the two would be the uh, the uh, the coding we'll be using. So we'll be using a, a coding of three over four for MCS index ten, and then a coding of five over six for MCX number eleven. <clears throat> so the coding in Wi-Fi is used, uh, so we can pretty much recover some bits if we lose some bits uh, in in the transmission. 
Um, and so the, the, the idea is we're going to send more than just the data bits we want to send. And if we lose some of the sequence, the rename, remaining bits will help us to understand uh, what you were supposed to be to be sent. So with the coding of three over four, it means with for three uh, bits of data, we're going to send four bits. Uh, so a little bit more uh, bits, um, a little bit more overhead, I guess. And then with the coding of five over six, for every five bits of data, I will send six bits. So that that that's the coding or the error coding, and that's going to help us to recover the data if we lose some. Uh, so in a, in a, in a nutshell, that's pretty much the uh, you know the ten twenty four quam. Um, nothing really crazy here. We're just increasing the complexity of the quam modulation uh, to send more bits. Um, the um, uh, so and then we need we're gonna need a very good SNR in order to be achieving those uh, this modulation 1024 quam. Um, so if we talk, if we're thinking about the, you know the different challenges that this complex modulation technique brings is you know if we want to be able to achieve that we we'll, we're gonna have to be very close to the access point. So um, it's hard to evaluate you know how often we'll be using 1024 quam. Um, in, you know, I've I've used uh, in in my office where I have a AX access point, and then the the Galaxy S10. Uh, I was able to achieve 1024 quam um, without any issue. Uh, so I'm I'm about you know um, I was say two to two to three meters away from the access points, and I'm able to achieve the MCS MCS index 11, so the highest possible, uh, without without any issue. Um, so which, which is a good news. I wasn't expecting, um, I guess that, uh, at first, um, I've seen some documentation from, from vendors as well, where, you know, they they show the zone of impact of 1024 quam and it's actually pretty good. I'm guessing in the typical office environment where you're not too, too far away from the access point, uh, you'll be able to achieve 1024 quam maybe in, in, in a, you know, radius of three, four meters around the access point. Um, after that, the signal quality I don't, won't be good enough to be able to achieve those moderations. Uh, in, in environments where the access point is, is higher up under the ceiling, I don't think we'll, we'll be able to use 1024 quam. Um, and if we do, if we do, you know, uh, a capacity planning, uh, studies. I don't think it's a good idea to base our data rate on 1024 quam because we won't be using it everywhere. So we have to be careful when we do our capacity planning. Maybe not use those MCS indexes when we do our calculations, just to be safe. Uh, even if it's used at some locations, um, uh, it, it might not be used everywhere. Uh, so. I guess that would be some 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 of the challenges we'll have with 2024 quam. It's it's not going to be used everywhere. It might be used at some locations if we're close enough to the access point and we have a good SNR, um, and we don't have much noise in the environment as well. That's going to play. Uh, uh, um, maybe on on five gig we'll use more than 2.4, uh, since generally the the five gig environment is a healthy. Uh, RF environment, so maybe we'll have a better SNR on five gigs. So I, I haven't haven't tested that yet. Um, so maybe I'll, I'll let you guys know if I have more data to share uh, on that. Um, and so uh, what I'm also expecting to see is uh, that would be nice to see, you know, on the on the on the vendors uh, dashboards. That would be nice to see the different. Uh, 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 distribution of MCS index throughout our clients um, so we can see exactly how many clients are using or what's the percentage of clients are, that are using 1024 quam just to get an idea and I guess uh, as we as we get more Wi-Fi 6 devices in, into our networks and into our Wi-Fi 6 networks uh, we'll be able to start uh, evaluating how much you know uh, how much of uh, the quantity of devices that use 1024 quam? Uh, so I think in order to to have a really good idea, we're gonna have to wait a little bit to uh, to see the data we get from the real world and from real real live uh, deployments. 
Um, yeah. And so, and like I said, it might be an advantage where we might be able to take advantage of it if we are very close to the access points. Uh, I'm guessing more in, in um, you know, office environment, especially the open, the open space office environment. So we'll see. Um, one thing that uh, I was thinking originally is that, uh, you know, with OFDMA and the resource units, so uh, if you guys remember the previous episode, the resource unit is pretty much um, a, a smaller sub, a, a sub section of the 20 megahertz uh, wide channels. I was thinking that because we're reducing uh, the size of the channel, we'll be increasing the SNR. Um, uh, but it's actually not, not the case here with uh, uh, 802.11ax. And we had a good discussion on Twitter uh, with uh, Troy Martin, Andrew Van Nash, Hendrix Lutz, and uh, Jim Vajda uh, about two weeks or three weeks ago. And I actually included the link in, in, the, uh, sh in, the, um, uh, in the show notes of the podcast if you guys are interested in, in, in going back and read the conversation. But so in, even if in OFDMA we're going to subdivide the 20 megahertz wide channel in, into smaller channels, um, the receiver will still be listening on the full 20 megahertz wide channel. Uh, so we, we're actually, we're not going to um, increase the SNR. We're not going to reduce the noise. It's going to be the same as what we used to uh, in the past. Uh, so it's not necessarily going to help us decode 1024 QAM. Uh, and I think we had this idea of, you know, uh, reducing the noise if the channels becomes narrower because of, uh, because of channel bonding. You know, when they, when they introduced the uh, 40 megahertz wide channels, uh, they said, if you want to listen to 40 megahertz wide channels, not, now that your noise will increase by 3 dB, will double because you're listening to a wider, um, uh, bandwidth. And so I think because of that, we had the idea that if we reduce the size of the channel now, we're going to increase uh, our SNR, we're going to reduce the noise. Uh, but in this case, it's not the case because we're still listening to the full 20 megahertz wide channels, even if our RU is only a subsection of that. Um, so that, I think that was a very good uh, discussion. So I, I didn't know that. I, I uh, initially thought that we would get you know, less noise. Um, but I guess it's not the case. So once again, we'll see how in the real life, we're really excited to see how it's going to play and then the quantity of devices that will be able to leverage 1024 QAM. Um, I had really, um, I guess I wasn't very uh, optimistic about it. Uh, at first, um, I was thinking, you know, you get a bit 10 centimeters away from the access points to leverage it. But, you know, the... From what I've been seeing so far, it's it's actually uh, uh, okay. It's it's not that bad. So we'll see. I'm excited to see how it's gonna uh, play in the real life. Um, uh, feel free to let let us know what you think about it. If you think it's just uh, um, it, it's not that big of a deal, or if you think it can make a big difference on the, on the, on our f uh, networks. So let let us know in the comments. I would be curious to think uh, to think what you uh, to know what you think. Um, so that's that's pretty much about it for 1024 QAM. Let's talk about the new um, MCS, the new data rate we get with Wi-Fi 6. Um, and that's when it, it, it uh, changes a little bit from what we used to. Uh, we used to, you know, the MCS table from 11N and 11AC. Uh, if you go to mcsindex.com, you'll see the which MCS table I'm talking about. Um, uh, Keith Parson has a very nice uh, MCS table as well for uh, for AC 11 AC on his website uh, with nice colors. So that's that's the MCS table, MCS table we used to. Um, the MCS table pretty much organizes all the data rates in a nice table according to which modulation technique is used, um, and then we can we can figure out exactly the data rate based on. Uh, different variables based on the the number of spatial streams, based on the channel width, so 20, 40, 80, 160, and based on the guard interval, which is pretty much the space, um, the dead air space between each uh, OFDM subcarrier uh, symbol. Sorry, OFDM symbol. 
um, and then we have we end up with this whole table of day rates. Um, with AX, we are going to change some of these variables. So some of these variables are changing, and this will affect pretty much all the day rates. So all the day rates we get with Wi-Fi six will be different, different because we're changing some of these variables. Um, so if we want to understand a little bit how you know the new A.T. dot eleven AX um, MCS are 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 working, we have to understand how it used to work before. Okay, and we we need to understand how we used to calculate date rates. Uh, so the if we take our signal, so our channel, let's um, let's take our twenty megahertz wide channels, um, and going back to eleven N or eleven AC where we use OFDM. So we have these 20, 20 megahertz wide channels. If we want to understand how much data we're able to carry within that twenty megahertz wide channels, and if we want to essentially calculate the data rates, we need to understand, you know, how many uh, subcarriers are present, how many data subcarriers are present within that 20 megahertz wide channels. Uh, so, you know, back with with the 11N and 11AC, we know we have under our 20 megahertz wide channels, we have 64 subcarriers. And out of those 64 subcarriers, 40 of, 48 of them are data subcarriers. So now we know that we have 48 subcarriers carrying data. Um, after that, we need to know the duration of the OFDM symbol. So that's pretty much the the amount of time that we're going to use to send data over each subcarrier. Uh, then we need to know the GORD, GORD interval, uh, which is pretty much the uh, data between each symbol. So that's a time when we're not going to we're, we are not going to be sending any data. Um, then we need to understand the modulation we'll be using to encode the data. So on each subcarrier we have our signal and we'll be encoding the signal to represent some data. And depending on the modulation technique we'll be using, um, we'll be sending more or less data, right? The more complex the modulation technique is, the more data we're sending. And the less complex the modulation technique is, the less data we're sending. Okay, so if we know the modulation and if we know the coding, we can calculate the amount of data we're sending on each subcarrier. Right. So if we have uh, if we have all this data and also the, num the number of spatial streams. Right. So if we have all of this data, the the, the number of subcarrier, the modulation and encoding used, the number of spatial streams, the gourd, the gourd interval and the symbol duration, we can pretty much calculate the data rate. Right. And then we can actually. Um, um, apply a formula that I put in the show notes, and the formula is not. It's if you if you try to decompose it, it's not very uh, very complex. Uh, you have to take the number of data subcarrier, right? So in 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 our case with N and AC, that would be forty eight. <clears throat> then you have to multiply um, the number the number of coded bits per subcarrier per stream. So that's pretty much the number of bits you can encode on each cycle based on your modulation techniques. Uh, so uh, if, if I take an example like 64 QAM, uh, with 64 QAM you can encode 6 bits per cycle, so that would be 6 here, right? Um, and then you have to multiply it by your coding code, right? So the coding, remember, that's the uh, you know, 3 over 4, 5 over 6 we talked about earlier. Uh, so depending on, on which coding you're using, uh, you'll multiply those number by the coding, and then you multiply all of that by the number of spatial streams. So you multiply the the number of data subcarrier by the number of coded bits per subcarrier, depending on your modulation, and then you multiply that by your coding rate, uh, and then you multiply that by the number of spatial streams. And then when you have that, you divide it by the duration of your OFDM symbol plus the duration of your guard interval. Right, and then um, if you <clears throat> if you do the the calculation correctly, uh, you should have uh, some results. Um, and then if you want to have the results in megabits per second, you need to make sure that you convert the symbol duration and the interval duration in seconds 
before your 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 calculations if you want to have the the results in in megabits per second uh, if you use um, microseconds or nanoseconds you'll have the results in megabits per nanoseconds or megabits per microseconds and you can have to convert it afterwards um, so that's pretty much the, the 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 formula so if you want to try it out yourself uh, you can you can do that um, what we did in the show notes as well we included a table with all all of the different parameters that you can use in a, that are used I guess in 11n and 11ac so you'll see the different moderation techniques used you'll see the error coding used along with those moderation techniques you will see the number of bits uh, that you can encode per uh, cycles as well um, and then you'll see the number of spatial streams you can have access to with 11n or 11ac and then you'll see the number of, of subcarrier you have per um, um, uh, per channel width so 20 40 80 160 um, and then something that never changes in 11n and 11ac is the symbol duration so it's um it's already 3.2 uh, 3 microseconds. Um, and then we have access to two different guard intervals, the short or the long. So short guard interval is 0 0.4 or 0 0.4 microseconds or 400 nanoseconds. And the long guard interval is uh, 800 nanoseconds or 0 0.8 microseconds. So along with that, you can calculate uh, the full MCS table. Uh, now, if we're talking, so that, that that's talking about the, you know, 11N, 11AC. Now, if we talk about AX, so the, the big change in AX is, uh, you know, the, the symbol duration is changing. It's not going to be 3.2 microseconds anymore. Uh, if you remember the episode we did on, on OFDMA or on the subcarrier, we said that they're, they will mo ma they're increasing the the symbol duration by four so they're multipl multiplying the symbol duration by four so we now have a symbol duration of 12.8 microseconds and along with that they're also introducing new guard intervals so instead of having two uh, guard intervals now we're going to have three with ax we're going to have the real 0 0.8 microseconds uh, 1.6 microseconds and 3.2 microseconds all right, so we have a longer symbol duration of 18.8, .8, and then we have uh, three guard intervals, 0 0.8, 1.6, and 3.2. So you can see how it's going to affect our calculations. Uh, and then another change we're bringing with, um, with AX is the number of subcarrier. So once again, when we talked about the subcarrier in the previous episode, we said that they increased the number of subcarriers by four. So now under our 20 megahertz wide ch uh, channel, instead of having 64 subcarriers, we now have 256. Uh, so they divided the bandwidth of the subcarrier uh, by four. So now we have more subcarriers. So that's gonna also, that's gonna affect our uh, data rate calculation. Right, so if we take our, uh, if we look at our formula, uh, essentially our formula will not really change, uh, except that the variable that we used uh, to calculate our data rates will be changing for um, AX. Right, the most important would be the one I just talked about, so the symbol duration, the guard interval, and the number of subcarriers. Um, in terms of number of spatial streams with AX, we can go from one to eight. So that hasn't changed from uh, AC, for instance. Um, and then in terms of modulation, we can start at BPS, uh, BPSK, and then we have QPSK, and then 16 QAM, 64 QAM, 256 QAM, and now we have 1024 QAM. All right, so that's the modulation techniques we'll be able to use. Um, um, along with the codings and the spectral streams, and then the number of subcarriers will be, um, for for instance, 20 megahertz wide channels, the number of data subcarrier will be 234. Okay? So if we apply the formula with the new variable, we can get the new data rates. Um, and because these, you know, 
the, the these important variable changes so the you know the symbol duration or the guard interval or the number of subcarriers per per channel uh, all the data rates are pretty much going to change um, so I've, uh, in the show note we included a link to uh, the updated MCS table that we created uh, we created I actually have an article on my blog uh, if you go to Stemfio networks dot com slash blog you'll see an article where you can download the mcs table the the updated one with all the he data rates and you'll see that all pretty much all the data rates are new and this is because we changed the the core variables we changed the symbol duration we changed the guard interval and we changed the number of of uh, subcarrier um per channel so that's that's a reason why all the data rates are new and you can actually see if you take the you know MCS table and you you, you look at the you know the 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 minimum data rate, um, uh, if you take the MCS zero, which would be you know using BPS BPSK with the coding of one over two, uh, you can see that with uh, with OFDM prior AX you will get a minimum data rate of six point five, but now if you use if you still use OFDM uh, with AX you have a day rate of 8.6, right? So um, I don't know if you guys remember, but when we talked about uh, the episode on subcarriers, um, just the fact of, you know, multiplying the symbol duration by four and dividing uh, the uh, subcarrier by four, increasing the number of subcarriers, so uh, uh, reducing the bandwidth of each subcarrier, that allowed us to reduce the overhead to reduce uh, you know the um pretty much the dead air and which we said that it would bring an improvement of 18% in in terms of data rate and here you can actually see that you know the minimum data rate is going from 6.8 to 8.6 just by doing that just by increasing the symbol duration and increasing the number of, of uh subcarrier right we still we're still within 20 megahertz. We're still using one special stream. We're still using BPSK, and we're still using a coding of one over two. Um, but we increase the day rate by uh, about 18 percent, and you can clearly see that in the MCS table. Um, then something that's specific with AX is OFDMA, right? With OFDMA, if you guys remember. Uh, we we're going to have resource units, and these resource units might have different sizes. Um, different sizes are, you know, are uh, detailed in the the standard, and that's pretty much the size of our baby channels, right? And so each each uh, uh, RU will have a dedicated dedicated set of subcarrier uh, assigned to it, and we have different sizes. Uh, and they 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 call they they call subcarrier tones in that in in that case, and so we can have a channel a baby channel of twenty six tone, which is the smallest one you can get. You can put nine twenty six tone baby channels within twenty megahertz wide, uh, a twenty megahertz wide channel. Uh, so we have twenty six tone, we have fifty two tones, we have one hundred and six tones, two hundred and forty two tones, four hundred and eighty four tones and 996 tone. Uh, so that's the different RU size we can have with OFDMA. And depending on the RU size, obviously you're going to have different subcarrier available to you. So if you have a 26 tone, you have 24 data sp subcarrier uh, that you can use to carry data. So along with that, along with OFDMA and the different RU size units, now we have different channel size so that's going to in introduce a whole new set of data rate as well. Uh, so for if we use OFDMA, um, we're going to have a whole new set of data rate available to us. Um, and once again, if you look at the MCS table we created, um, we we separated the OFDMA rate from the non-OFDMA rates, uh, and you'll be able to see uh, those rates with di different colors, and you'll see you'll see the difference. Um, something that's worth noting is some of them would be the same. Uh, if we, if you take, for instance, 
uh, a RU of 996 stone, that's equivalent to 80 megahertz wide channels. So all the data rates that you have under the 996 stone RU column will be the same as the uh, the data rate you have in the 80 megahertz wide channels the column. And if you go into show notes and you look at the tables, the parameter, parameters tables, you'll actually see that, you know, um, 80 megahertz wide channels has 980 uh, data subcarriers, and it's exactly the same, that uh, same amount of subcarriers you have available in a 996 stone. Okay? And similarly, uh, 40 megahertz is the same as a 484 tone, um, and 242. 242 tone is the same as a 20 megahertz wide channel. Um, yeah, so if you take if you take the smallest RU possible, so the uh, uh, if you take the the 26 tone, right? Uh, that's where you're gonna have the lowest data rate, I guess, possible because you only have 24 subcarriers. And if you look at the MCS table, the lowest data rate will be 0 0.9 in that case if you're using OFDM with the smallest baby shuttle available to you. All right, so this is this is the reason why we have a lot more data rates in our MCS table now with AX. First, uh, we had to recalculate everything because we're changing the symbol duration. Uh, it goes from 3.2 microseconds to 12.8 microseconds. Second of all, um, instead of having two guard intervals, now we have three. So we have 0 0.8 microseconds, 1.6 microseconds, and 3.2 microseconds. Uh, and, then, um, and then fourth, we have OFDMA. So depending on if we're using OFDMA with resource, resource units or if we're not, if we're just using OFDM with AX, we're going to have different data rates. So that increases the number of data rates we'll have available to us, and that makes the MCS table a little bit more complicated. If you take a look at the complete MCS table for the eight data, um, the eight special streams, we actually we are actually introducing uh, two thousand eight hundred and eighty new data rates with AX, eight to the eleven AX. So obviously we won't be using all of them, right? Most most client devices. Uh, for now, AX client devices are only two spatial streams. Um, maybe in the future, we have some of them that would be three spatial streams. Um, if we're using multi-user MIMO, at one point in the future, maybe we'll have access to some of the highest data rate. Um, but you know, in the in the near future, I'm not expecting us to use more than two or three spatial streams. Uh, so we're not, we're not going to be using all the data rates available to us in the in the MCS table, um, but it, it's it's nice to try to understand you know why we have all these new data rates available. If you actually take a look at the draft, uh, and we put we put the details in the in the show notes once again. But if you take a, a look at the section uh, twenty eight point five uh, twenty eight point five sorry called parameters for HEMCS. Uh, you would be able to see all the different data rates available or introduced with a uh, he with ax, and you'll see you'll see what I'm talking about there. Um, yeah, so that's 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 pretty much it for you know the different MCS and the data rates. Uh, if you go to my blog, uh, semfionetworks.com/blog, uh, I actually put a little articles and I explained the math. Uh, behind the MCS table, if you want to to take a look at it, uh, if you want to do it yourself, um, it, there's it's actually a really good exercise to to do it yourself, so you can understand how everything works. You actually put uh, an example on on my on my blog that explains uh, the data rate I was getting from my phone. Um, so from my phone, I was getting a data rate of uh, you know. 1,200 uh, megabits per second, and I was just explaining that I was able to, you know, achieve that with MCS with the MCS of 11, which means that I was using 1024 QAM with a coding of five over six, and a short chord interval of 0 0.8 microseconds. Um, so I and and the, the 
the reason why I started to to you know pay attention to that and and try to pretty much reverse engineer the data rates is I I wasn't able to find any really information online to you know which MCS I was using with Wi-Fi six, so I started to just uh, do the math myself and then and, and create the the uh, I guess update the MCS table. Um, so yeah, if you if you have any more questions, uh, um, if you want to add your two cents, if you want to tell us, you know, uh, which type of day rates you you expected to see um, uh, on your on your Wi-Fi six networks, please please feel free to you know send us a message on on Twitter at clear to send. You can also comment in uh, on the website in the show notes clear to send dot net slash one sixty seven. Um, and if you think this is a uh, you know good information, valuable information, feel free to share it with your with your friends. Uh, this episode is just another episode of our 802.11 AX series. Uh, so if you want to listen to our previous episodes uh, that we did in this 802.11 AX series, you can go to clearsendnet slash AX, and you'll be able to see all the different episodes. Uh, so we talked about OFDMA, we talked about subcarriers, we talked about, um, uh, you know, channel access. Uh, we talked about different things. So if you just want to learn more about, you know, how AX will work, uh, feel free to listen to the to the, the previous episodes. All right, guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Uh, and then we'll see you next week in a brand new episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.